In the big bill stack, we'll keep you in the know. In the big bill stack, we'll fix your techie woes. And we'll break things up, we'll make these till we're all together raking. And we'll raise a cup of grog down in the big bill stack. In the big bill stack, come and join our fire crew. In the big bill stack, we will show you what to do. And we'll hack it till we crack it. And we'll tell the world about it and forget to tidy up. That's why it's now a bilge tank. Hello and welcome to a very special episode 027 <laughs> of the Bill Shank from Sheffield on Sea with Phil and me, but no Paul. Hello. Um, I mean, really, we're only doing this because it's Phil's birthday today, so we thought we'd have a little party. We've got our uh, we've got our rum, we've got our hot sauce. We have, and we've got a birthday cake. So uh, all all of the things. That's that's yeah. We're just going to work our way through all of this, and then. Uh, <laughs> we're done. The no way. Breakfast. No. We'll divide it down the middle. We have, of course, the brand new Raspberry Pi 3 launched today. Uh, and we're here to answer your questions about it. Anything you want to know. Uh, we're going to have a quick chat through the new features. Uh, Phil's got some demos and things. We've got some new products on the store. Uh, I just need to type a few things into this computer. So I'm going to hand over to Ooh. Phil for a moment. Do you want to talk about the, uh, the goodies? Ooh. Well, the cat's pretty much been left let out of the bag, hasn't it, with regards to the specifications and things. But the uh, Pi 3, we can now confirm, is a 64-bit CPU, which is cool because it allows a lot of potential for new shiny operating systems to be compiled directly for 64-bit. Be nice and fast and awesome and sweet. Um, it's still a gig of RAM, isn't it? It's still a gig of RAM. It's still a gig of RAM, which is perfectly adequate for all uses. Yeah, exactly um, the same RAM as on the old one, I believe, LPDDR2. Ooh, uh, in fact, I think it's the same part. That um, would make a lot of sense, yeah, for the economies of scale and whatnot. The 64 bit processor is a Cortex it's a A53, a which is uh, ARM V8 ARM V8, that's architecture, the one, yes. um, which is pretty sweet. And it's clocked at 1.2 gigahertz. 1.2 of your gigahertz. If you go into Raspi Config and attempt to overclock it anymore, it will tell you to not even bother. <laughs> this is as fast as it's going to go, or at least for now, until someone um, starts tinkering with it, presumably. Um, it also has, as is evidenced by this tiny, tiny little fellow here, which, oh, a little white dot in the top corner, onboard combi, Wi-Fi and Bluetooth um, low energy, which is great because it frees up a USB port, or in fact two USB ports if you use a Bluetooth dongle. Um, and everything else is pretty much for much this. It's got the uh, connector for the LCD display. I've had one up and running with the LCD, works beautifully. Yeah, it's still got the camera connector. Um, still got the camera connector. Uh, HDMI 1.3a, I believe. <laughs> Can't, there's <laughs> far too many versions of these things. There's HDMI hasn't been <coughs> anymore. Um, but the most exciting thing is definitely the onboard Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. I th the chip is it's not the same chip that's in the official Wi-Fi dongle, but I think it's basically the same technology. It has the same has Bluetooth chip as well. in, uh, or it's had the same technology inside. So the Wi-Fi part is the same thing but the Bluetooth part is something else, so the combination gets a different part number. I think that's yeah. how it works anyway. And we've tested it's it, and the performance is basically the same as the official Wi-Fi dongle. So if you've used that before, you kind of know you what to expect with this. You kind of know what to expect, this. but you don't have to add it separately, which is no. great. And it's the same price. Like, the, all these extra features are there at yep. exactly the same price as the Pi 2, and the original, and the B+, plus and the original B. So it's just incredible. They keep cramming more onto this thing. And the price doesn't move, you know. It's, it's unbelievable, really. Oh, Yasmin Bay asks, are the Pi 2 Pi Bows incompatible with the Pi 3? They yes. are not fundamentally incompatible, but there are a few changes to the Pi 3 that means we have redesigned Pi Bow. So you, if you're, yeah, I wouldn't buy a Pi 2 Pi Bow now. Um, the big deal is that the processor is running faster and is warmer. So we've cut a vent in the top of the, the coupe. Uh, the vent is there just to allow better airflow, but also it means you can actually now mount a heatsink uh, onto the chip if you want to. It only really matters if you are absolutely maxing out the CPU. It's not, you know, it's not like a, a requirement. I've been playing Moopin 64 Plus on the Pi 3, and it gets kind of warm to the touch. That sort of the warm to the touch that means you wouldn't want to touch it for a sustained period yeah, of time, but not alarmingly hot. Um, the other big difference is that the SD, the micro SD slot on the Pi 3 is I've not spring demo, loaded anymore. Yeah. Yes. So with the old Pi 2, the, S, the micro SD slot was spring loaded. The, so you the SD card launcher. The SD card launcher, you could spring Basically it at people. 
uh, on the so Pi no, 3. There's no more picking up your Pi like that and get accident. Yeah. Launching your SD card out. Which is when I first heard about that, I was kind of disappointed. But actually, having said that, even though it was a very small <coughs> number of units, the biggest failure mode we ever saw with Pi 2 was the spring-loaded SD yeah. slot. But they made this lovely, yeah. super advanced, sophisticated computer system, and the one thing that uh, broke with any kind of frequency was the, the SD card slot, which is great. That's been fixed now. Uh, no more. Gordon Henderson is just saying oh, the foundation case is fine. So, sorry, to finish with that, the micro SD slot, we've, we've basically made the recess deeper, which means you can get a fingernail in there to remove the SD card. You're going to struggle with the Pi Bow for Pi 2, just because you can't get on that these, little lip of the micro SD. These are old style Pi No, these are the new ones. The yeah, I've just got oh, these so from downstairs. So they've got the deeper oh, yeah, recess. Oh, yeah, they've got Blooming Great Big Holes for the heat sink. Um, so they've also got a couple of small events on the bottom as well, just to help with the airflow as well. Get in on the close-ups. <laughs> so uh, much junk in the way. I can't remember how to get close so to uh, the camera. It's on the two. sheet. There we Bam! Go. There we go. So, as you can see <coughs> here, we've flushed the top of the case off to give it that nice kind of clean edge. And then the bottom now has this recess that means if I grab an SD card, hold on, I've got a Pi cane on my lap. Uh, da, 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 da. If I grab an SD card and slot it in there. Ooh, ooh. Oh, 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 I've done something fundamentally wrong here. <laughs> in, uh, uh, Go on, Phil, it's early, it's early morning. Right, okay, SD card is now in. Now that extra recess means you can just get your finger or thumbnail in and out it comes. No, no problems whatsoever. You'll notice that on micro SD cards, there's a, a small lip at the end yeah, specifically they, for this kind pitch. of removal. So the extra cut just lets you get at that lip basically, so it's easier to remove. Uh, and as you can see on the top side, on the bottom we've got these two vents, so two Tiny edge vents. Tiny venting. <laughs> and down the edges as well, Phil. It's kind of slots down the oh, edges. Yeah. And that's just to improve airflow through the case. Um, so you can basically attach a 30mm uh, fan to each side. Maybe some liquid cooling. And then Maybe on the top side, obviously we've got the, the hole for the processor. Uh, again, it's just to provide a bit of extra venting, but also so you can mount a heat sink. No, you can put so fabulous in day to day use, you really don't need it. And um, the CPU will auto throttle, so it's not. Gonna, it's never going to get dangerously hot. It will just start to s slow down the clock frequency uh, as the temperature kind of exceeds eighty-two degrees. Um, but there's no, there's no problem with that. It's just, uh, just to um, take care of the process, basically. Pretty much sticking a heat sink on is what you're going to do once you've um, kind of exhausted all other possibilities of squeezing performance out of the pie. Well, that's it. And running your 64-bit ports of emulators at max CPU clock, and you want to... Or really inefficiently mining bitcoins. Or, yeah, really, or, yeah, really yeah, inefficiently whatever, mining bitcoins. Whatever you want to do. Um, I have to apologise, I've got a terrible cold, so I'm sounding a bit <laughs> nasal today. Also the um, crack of dawn. We are going to be stocking heat sinks for the Pi 3. I think this is the first model where we feel there's any benefit at all. People have been selling heat sinks for Pis for ages, and ugh, it, just, it just doesn't matter. Um, however... Most of the heat sinks that are out there are actually too tall to work with a hat board installed at the same time. So if you put like one of these whacking great big heat sinks on there, and I think a unicorn hat or something, there we go. Obviously, it doesn't even come close to allowing the hat to sit on the Pi. So we're having some six millimeter tall heat sinks made, which will work nicely both with the Pi 3 with a hat on it and also with the coupe, the new coupe case. Um, so watch out for those, it's going to be a few weeks because Chinese, Chinese New Year and uh, custom manufacturing, but <laughs> we will get there. Uh, we're going to have a competition for a Pi 3 today as well, uh, and that is basically, you need to tweet us the best birthday card, either to our dear Phil here, <laughs> or to Raspberry Pi generally, oh, by 6pm wow, GMT today. So you tweet us a picture of a birthday card designed by your very fair hands, uh, either for Phil or the Raspberry Pi Foundation, and we're going to send you uh, a Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, and we're just going to pick the one we like best, so, you know, it's entirely down to us. Alistair Buxton asks a good question, which is about the Wi-Fi antenna and using things like hats with the board. Basically, he's saying, um, will Wi-Fi performance be affected by things like hats being installed? Um, the reality is that Wi-Fi is always going to be uh, affected by the kind of the environment, so there will always be... Um, changes to its performance depending on what's around it, you know, whether you've got it in a box made of lead or <laughs> um, hidden in your fridge or whatever. 
Um, so yeah, there certainly would be an effect. I, sh I wouldn't imagine that having something like a hat mounted on top would be dramatic. Certainly the Pibo has no effect on it at all. We've done some tests. Um, Sandy's written a nice blog post with wireless performance uh, data that he's benchmarked. And putting it in a Pibo makes no difference at all. Obviously a hat uh, will tend to have a kind of a copper ground plane, which is uh, basically a sheet of very thin we metal. Shall go um, close up again? Because the antenna's yeah, right on the very up. edge of the pie as well. Oh, so it's a, let's have a look. See. We're in. So the antenna is right here, that little thing on the very edge of the pie. Ooh, focus! Focus, Phil. Come on, man. There we go. And on so the bottom it's, it's, side is the actual chipset itself. It's I not think. like it's going to be kind of sat right underneath a hat. It's going to be in a, a place where it's kind of uh, getting the best signal that it can possibly get on this board. Oh, and if at such a point it does become a problem, you can still plug in a dongle. The Bluetooth is 4.1 and supports BLE as well, Nick Young. Super useful. Is asking. <coughs> um, so let's have a quick look at Go some of the nerdy stats. Um, how do I picture and picture the <coughs> surface? <from? laughs> uh, picture and picture the surface is number. F3 makes it big. Brilliant. Okay, that'll do. Oh, yeah, of course. <coughs> you don't need to see us. We look tired and haggard. Yeah, yeah. Um, so haggard. Sandy McDonald has put together a blog post for our newly launched blog. Launched today. Hurrah! I'm blogged at um, with a first look at the Raspberry Pi 3. Uh, it's quite exciting. Sandy's actually coming to work for Pimeroni on in April, so he's actually going to become a, an official right. pirate. Um, but he has put together some things for us in the meantime. And this is a reasonably comprehensive kind of introduction to the Raspberry Pi 3, the features. Uh, there's some benchmarking in here as well, which is nice to see. Uh, it's got a little bit more detail about the, the chip and uh, things like Video Core, they've bumped the clock speed up on that. Video Core provides things like the video processing and the 3D accelerator that are in the Raspberry that Pi. I did not know what they've done with the, the Video Core. They've taken the video processing unit, and I, I'm, this is how I understand it, the video processing unit has been bumped from 250 megahertz up to 400 megahertz, mm. and the 3D uh, graphics processor has been bumped from 250 megahertz up to 300 megahertz. So you should see a nice little bit of performance boost, especially with the work that's <coughs> going on with the OpenGL drivers at the moment. This could be some pretty serious stuff for emulation then. It could well. The Pycade on steroids. Um, the Wi-Fi is 2.4 gigahertz, and it's compatible with B, G, and N networks. Uh, which is obviously <laughs> Warring Pi has been updated. Warring Pi has been... Uh, nice speaking one, of Warring Pi, Gordon, I noticed that my GitHub repo being unmaintained had left things in a terrible, terrible, awful state and made a whole hash of the situation. So I've been working to tidy that up and get it back on track. So Warring Pi Python's got some updates and I'm, I'm getting the repo tidied up and sorted out and I've resynced Warring Pi from Warring Pi. Uh, You'll it was, have it fixed it today, was a bit of a mess. It was a bit of a mess. Um, so Sandy's also got it. some benchmarks in here, which is quite interesting. Uh, it's got boot time benchmarks, which obviously don't change much from the Pi 2, because boot is going to be quite I.O. constrained, but it's a little bit faster, which is always nice. Um, but the CPU <coughs> benchmarks are much more interesting. Yeah, boot is um, really shiny on an external hard disk, actually. Just like, yeah, we'll do a learning portal article for that. <coughs> it's it's kind of handy, isn't it? Um, yeah, for um, Sorry, CPU performance, what Sandy's seeing, and this is using Noobs 1.8.0, which is the latest Noobs build, but is not, I believe, is not actually built for the ARM64 architecture, so it's still the same yeah, as the Pi 2's architecture. It's still build. the same as the B plus architecture, in fact, it's, it's carrying that legacy at the moment. No, they updated for Pi 2, they went to ARM v7. Did they, 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 they have updated dual the distro because it's still, that's only the kernel that's different, yeah, all the binaries are all compiled still for ARM6L or something like that, so it's it's not good. But when we get a fresh build of Raspbian that specifically targets Pi 3, it should make a, a pretty significant difference. Definitely. Um, what Sandy saw was uh, CPU, when doing just CPU benchmarking, around 38% speed up which is pretty tasty. It's roughly what you'd expect, because the process at clock speed is about 33% higher than the yeah, original. Yeah, that makes sense. But if you move to prop, uh, you know, something compiled for the ARM64 architecture, you should see even yeah, more improvement Yeah, this will be where there. Ubuntu, is it Mate or Mate? The, the author called it Mate, but that's strange. It's got to be Mate. Uh, Ubuntu are Australian, right? 
<laughs> you bunt <laughs> <Okay>. in vain. <laughs> <right. laughs> so this is where Ubuntu and other alternate Linux distros will come in handy. And as of Russ, or as of Jesse rather, as of Debian Jesse, there's actually a 64-bit ARM distribution of Debian Jesse that I, that I dug up. So the, it's not inconceivable that a, a Raspbian Jesse 64-bit version could be around the corner, or possible at least by. Um, uh, members of the community who want to get that extra bit of performance out. So. I think that's going to be the key. It will probably be uh, a community effort because obviously there's going to be some work to get drivers all working and things like yeah, that. that but the in principle, the the performance boost should improve <coughs> over time as the software kind of aligns itself with the hardware correctly. Um, so it should be interesting. It's it's got potential. That's the thing. Um, Sandy's also had a quick look at the thermal sensors in the chip itself while running these CPU benchmarks and it does show that the Pi 3 runs hotter which is why we're now saying you know under certain workloads uh, heat sinks do actually make some sense but even then it's not going to damage it it's just about it. It's not even um, running 80 degrees that. that's nothing. No I know. I mean, PC runs at that all the time. We had to run um, in the workshop, we were running kind of 10 minutes really heavy stress tests to even with get the it to the rock camera on there. With the, with, yeah, with the thermal camera on there. Um, so, like I say, we'll have heat sinks coming, but it, you know, it's it, it's not essential, and um, it'll be fine anyway. Uh, the other aspect is obviously it's running at higher clock speed. You've got the Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth on board, so the power consumption has gone up. Um, it's now under heavy CPU load. You're looking at about 750 milliamps versus the old Pi 2 at about. 360 milliamps. Um, the uh, official power supply is still perfectly adequate. A good quality 2 amp power supply is fine. I believe they've upgraded the rating of the micro B connector to 2.5 amps on this version, um, from what I'm hearing. So we'll probably have some 2.5 amp power supplies coming in the future. But um, 2 amps is more than enough. You know, it's only if you really need that extra headroom uh, of <laughs> power available. Can we restate the specs for the still asleep people? Yeah, of course we can. Let's yeah. go back to the camera. Talk it through it's again, Phil. It's a 64-bit four-core processor clocked at 1.2 gigahertz, um, combined with one gig of RAM, um, and it's now got a non-push-pull SD card slot, so it's just a regular slot your SD card jobby in there. It has the standard HDMI and combined audio and video output that the um, B Plus and Pi 2 had. Um, it's still got the display connector, obviously, because we've got the display, and it's got the camera connector. Um, and it's got combined Wi Fi and Bluetooth 4.0 uh, with this little tiny 4 antenna. 4.1. Yeah, with 4.0 and 4.1. I have no idea, but it also supports <laughs> so the Bluetooth low energy as well, minor, yeah, which is nice. 4.0 is low energy, isn't it? I think, yeah. or something like that. But I think, I mean, the exciting thing about Bluetooth X. is obviously you can now use kind of wireless keyboard and trackback combos without yeah, a separate without dongle. Um, you could potentially stream music to it from your phone or whatever if you're using it as your kind of DAC controller. Um, there's lots of nice use cases for having Bluetooth on board. I suspect the only reason Bluetooth is on there as a feature is because it basically comes because free it with the came, Wi-Fi. Yeah, it came with a chip. So. Um, but that doesn't make it, that still makes it use, super, uh, useful. Super useful. It's ARM V8 ro uh, Rogue. It's ARM V8A, in fact. ARM V8A. It's Cortex 53, I think. You cannot take an existing working setup and put it in the Pi 3, um, and I don't know yet if there's an update that you can run that will get an existing setup, but I'll take this opportunity now to say, for God's sake, don't run <laughs> RPI update. Because um, I've run RPI yeah, update yeah. on branch next a couple of times, and in both occasions it's rendered my Pi 3 unbootable, and I've had to put the card into another laptop and surgically replace the files. So yeah. What are we seeing online um, at the moment? Noobs has not been updated on the Raspberry Pi websites, but I'm sure it'll be there by tomorrow. But basically you want Noobs 1.8.0 if you want the Wi-Fi drivers to be working, Bluetooth drivers and everything. I think 1.7.0 will, will boot. It's just yes. it doesn't have the, doesn't the drivers have the in yet. Um, we, we have updated Noobs cards, so the Noobs cards listed on our site are now imaged with 1.8.0, so it'll work out the box. Sorry, Slice of Pie. We do apologise. Um yeah, let's have a quick look at the rest of Sandy's yeah, CPU post. is on V8. The video core was overclocked to 400 megahertz. That's the, uh, I think, and I the think video core is basically a quad core thing, but it has separate units for video processing, like H.264. 
video. <coughs> I'm not 100% so there's sure. There's a Neon co-processor on there somewhere, isn't there? Right? But basically, I believe the decoder, I think the, the, like, the video decoding part of it is now clocked at 400 megahertz yeah. instead of 250. Yeah. And I think the 3D graphics processor it's is now out. clocked at 300 instead of 250. Yeah. So it's, it's a nice little bump. It'll be interesting. So basically, see. it's stock overclocked as much as is possible to go with the chip, I think, at this point. So here we have um, Wi-Fi performance. Sandy ran some tests over the weekend. Um, and this is essentially just comparing the onboard Wi-Fi uh, wireless LAN with onboard wireless LAN in a PIBO and using the official Wi-Fi dongle. And as you can see, there's basically there's nothing between it. I mean, Neon, so Neon is a floating point unit in the ARM CPU. There you that's, go. That's what it is. I knew it's in there somewhere. It's, it's emulator stuff. Emulator Competition stuff, details, yeah. Richard is asking. We're giving away a Raspberry Pi 3. We're giving away a Raspberry Pi 3 for the best hand-designed birthday card that is tweeted to us. <coughs> so you, you need to tweet it specifically to us, and it needs to be a birthday card either for Phil, because it's his birthday today, oh, or right. for Raspberry Pi, because it's also their birthday today, or both of them, in some sort of crazy gadgetoid Raspberry mashup. <laughs> we just don't the, care. There will be an update to Raspbian, yeah. We're um, expecting a 1.80 coming out soon, and you'll... If you're going to update Pi's, you'll probably want to wait for that, and you want to get the image rather than trying to do any kind of over-the-air update, ideally, because they don't they don't traditionally work terribly well. We'll um, see. The, yes. the main we'll problem I have with over-the-air updates on noobs is that they they don't mount and update the recovery partition. So if there's a, a a bootloader level change, then your recovery partition, which once worked on your mm -hmm. old Pi, because it's, it's not updated, it's yeah. now updated and won't work on the new Pi. I've seen this problem with um, Pi Zero, where people have updated it, the latest version, in their old Pi, and they put it in the new Pi, and it doesn't work because it don't. I don't think it updates the the recovery partition. And noobs boots from the recovery partition and then hands off to the boot partition to to boot from it. <sighs> uh, I just need to clarify with the competition that entries need to be in by six p.m. GMT. 6 p.m. GMT. Just make that clear. Um, Great. Zane time. SSF is asking, what's the average CPU temperature? There isn't really an average CPU temperature. The idle CPU temperature is between 36 and 38 degrees, which is exactly the same, really, as the Pi 2 and the Zero. Um, it's only when it starts being under load, and obviously load is variable, so there's no real average value there. Um, Let's say, what's the average flight speed of an unladen swallow? Was it? Indeed. Uh, and Sandy basically sums up saying uh, CPU performance is about 35% faster, which is roughly what you'd expect. It'll be really interesting to see what... Oh, apparently the new Raspbian is up. The new Raspbian is up. Ah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. It'll be really interesting to see how much extra performance you get out of it when you're actually running 64-bit uh, compiled software, like the you know, entire platform prepared specifically for it. February 2016. Is that the new version? Is that's, that a new version? I don't think that's the new version. It that's said the 9th of February, not didn't it? This one. Yeah, I don't think it's updated yet. It will be. I'm sure it will be today. We shall see. Then again, we could be looking at cache numbers. <sighs> Who knows? Okay. Thank you. I think, I think, well, I don't know. I think that's pretty much everything um, there is to say about it right now. We've put together a new essentials bundle because we know that a lot of people won't want a full starter kit but may want another power supply and another Noobs SD card. Because often, you know, if you're getting a, a new Pi and you still want to keep your old one running, you still need those extras. So if you check out our website, we've got um, what we're calling the essentials bundle. You get the Pi 3, you get a Pi bow of your choice. Uh, you get the official power supply and you get a pre-imaged noobs card with 1.8.0 on it, ready for yeah, Raspberry Pi 3. We've stepped and a up sticker. our game with the noobs card, haven't we? We've got an awesome we imager got a, so a, we can write our own cards. We have an SD imager that you just load with loads of cards and away you go. We're going to start preloading it with Adware, <coughs> compromised root security certificates, just like your favourite laptop vendor. Oh, here's a good question. Alistair Buxton has asked, what bus is the Wi-Fi connected to? Now. This is a really good question because good question. it's not on the USB bus. No. It is actually connected via SDIO, so it's completely independent of the USB bus on the Pi. It won't affect the USB bus performance at all. 
um, which is a sensible place to do it. SDIO is the the kind of expansion spec to SD card slots, which allows you to effectively talk to a smart SD card that might have Wi-Fi on board. So that yeah. this was done for PDAs and things yeah, that used to use so SD could, card memory, but so that you could add like a Wi-Fi module to yeah. it or whatever. It was like a protocol. It was a good idea, and it, it turns out it's um, beneficial even now. Sarge is asking, will a 64-bit Raspbian be released? We don't know, actually. I um, think the community will it. fill the gap with a 64-bit Raspbian, but I At think the danger of releasing a 64-bit Raspbian is the communication that this is a version of Raspbian you should use instead of this, and the support load of having two completely different distros to maintain, because mm. I think the driver blobs and stuff may have to change <laughs> if there's a 64-bit kernel involved, but I'm not I imagine sure, so. because like Windows Linux has got the ability to fudge back compatibility with 32-bit and it's it's not a simple problem but I think I suspect they're thinking about it yeah they'll certainly be so it will certainly be tackled by someone and you don't necessarily have to use Raspbian I mean you can switch to raw Debian which has a 64-bit um, version as of Jesse or uh, another distro most likely Ubuntu which will be 64-bit as well. I think I feel like we should do a live a live connection to Paul. Oh, is he? Is he? I don't ready? know if he's ready. Let's let's try and call let's Paul. Call. Paul's let's down at the official launch event. What's this? We're, we're going to be all all professional and stuff, and, and actually he's our get someone in the field. He's our roving reporter, no less. Let's see what happens. Oh, Rogue said he's always got Raspian from archives.raspian.org. A uh, very good question. Very good point, actually. Oh, he appears to be locked in. This uh, I can't even find that. Archive.raspbian? Yeah, here we go. Uh, images. What does this even mean? Uh, multi arc cross. There are so many. <coughs> Raspbian. Dists. Jesse. No, I'm in, I'm in the. This is not the right place to go. Images. No, I, don't, I have no idea what. Yeah. These are all dated 2012. Yeah, okay. I'm going to go back to the front end, the images page. Raspbian images. This just links me back. What, the, what is this we're looking at here, Phil? I don't even know. I'm, I'm <laughs> you quietly, don't even know. I'm going to quietly back away. This, if you if you're advanced enough to be digging around here, you can install it yourself. But I'm going to try and find it. I want to find out. Pulls down in. Um, uh, apparently 64 bit is maybe says Evan Upton in the blog but it's a lot of work and they don't have many people to be doing that work so it's I wouldn't count on it kind of in the near future the other hey, big bit of news today is compute module 3 which is coming out which Ooh, uh, that just been mentioned down there so. yeah it was being announced today oh compute module hey compute module 3 that that means something for a very special product it does indeed, doesn't it? It does indeed. Um, if any of you out there own a slice, I know I do, and I, uh, up till recently when YouTube completely bought the farm on there, I, I used it quite regularly. Uh, that's that's not the idea. Hey, but, we've got Paul. Oh wow, Let's bring him in. Can anyone second? hear this, Paul? Can Paul hear us? Let's go. We can turn the microphone right. on. There I need to. I need to connect to the to same him. hangout, basically. Um, so we can, we can actually hear center. Paul. <laughs> hey, hey, second. Paul. Can you? Uh, Can't hear anything, Bella. Where are we? Where are we? Hey, if he just tunes into Build Tank, he'll get us on a 15 minute delay. And we'll get him back on a 15 minute delay, and it'll be like talking to Mars. I don't know. This works Except without before. the potatoes. I can't find it. Paul is in a, I'm assuming in a hotel room somewhere. No, that's the shard, isn't it? Is he in the shard? Are you in the shard, Paul? He's I'm very gonna, high let's up. plug in the headphones. Unless that is the tallest hotel building ever, then clearly. I recognise this London skyline. Where is that? Uh, I don't know. Where are you? Is that like one of the towers? Can we hear you, Paul? Can we hear him? I can't hear anything. It'll be coming through yeah. there. An error occurred. Oh no. What? Is that an error for just us or in general? No. Oh, it's on my. Oh, I don't know. Red alert. We don't know if anyone's. <laughs> no, it, that's just an error for you, I think, because I'm still getting the feed. Okay, that was brilliant. <laughs> no idea if you could hear anything Paul said, or if he even said anything. Um, we couldn't hear anything, so that was 
Uh, just we, ace. <laughs> we can maybe get this figured out and sort Yeah, of we'll try that again later um, with a little more practice. We, might, we had that working at the weekend. We did a test. It's frustrating. Oh, where are we? There we go. Da, da, da. Um, and that's, I think that's it for now. We may be back later. The launch event is at 9am. It's in the Shard. Um, we will liaise with Paul, see if we can get that hookup working, and maybe we'll patch him in and see if we can grab some people for some interviews and things. So, for now, go and grab your Pi 3, and uh, have some fun. Boom! Don't forget to subscribe. Like. And comment, comment on this video. On, on the video. We will see you all later. Ah. Oh. Yeah, sleepy time now. <laughs> it's sleepy time. Bye. Bye.